happy St. Patrick's Day and uh, Beauty and the Beast comes out today. I already got my uh, IMAX ticket, so let's go. Here's the IMAX theater. Uh, yeah, let's get out of here. Alright guys, so I finally saw it. I finally saw Beauty and the Beast. Uh, I saw it two times. The first time being in IMAX and the second time being a regular. Uh, I saw it the two times because I wanted to watch it the second time and I wanted to see if I would change any opinions, but it seemed to have been one of those movies that my, where my opinion stays the same as the first time. Similar to the Jungle Book, Beauty and the Beast is a live action remake to its original animated version of it. As for the plot in this movie, we have Belle who is a bit misunderstood because she likes books. She's a little bit more different from all the other girls in her village and her dad actually gets captured in the castle by a beast and uh, some of his friends who are antiques, um, you know, Cogsworth, uh, Umir, we all know those characters. And, of course, Belle decides to replace her dad with herself as the prisoner. And from there, they realize that Belle could actually break the spell that they have on the Beast and on all of his friends who are the uh, antiques. And if they actually learn to love each other, then they could actually break the spell. They try to stay as true as possible as they can to the original animated version. Talking about great casting choices, Emma Watson was the fantastic choice for Belle. I think that she just, she nails every single scene she is in this movie, every song she sings. She is just fantastic in this movie. And I just love her so much. She looks just about exactly like Belle from the 1991 animated Beauty and the Beast. She she is easily one of the best casting decisions I have ever seen in my life. I just loved her so much in this film. She just looks so stunning in that yellow dress and she is perfect for Belle. Dan Stevens as the Beast is actually also really good. Uh, they used motion capture for his character I believe. My only complaint with his character, it's not about the actual character as who he is but more of his appearance in the movie. There are some scenes, especially towards the half of the second act, where the CGI on the beast kind of looks unfinished, but that's about it. But he he does a great performance, and for the songs that he sings in this movie with that, you know, deep voice, it, it's just really nice. Edwin McGregor is Lumiere, and Ian McKellen is Cogsworth in this movie, and they just lend their voices just you know perfectly to these characters they they have that voice you know um uh Ellen McGregor for uh Lumiere he just has that like French accent and he he does some fantastic voice acting in this movie and same for Ian McKellen he has like that like classy voice if you know what I'm talking about he has that like really nice classy voice which of course fits Cogsworth Emma Thompson as Mrs. Potts does a really really good job and same for the little kid who voices uh, Chip, I don't know his name, but he does a really good job. He just has this adorable voice, and when you combine his adorable voice with a cup, a talking cup, it's awesome. Kevin Klein as that Bell's dad's Maurice, he, ha he does a really believable performance. I actually bought that he was this character. The standouts for this movie, Luke Evans as Gaston, and Josh Gad as... Uh, LeFou. 
they have such a great bond. And I mean, Luke Evans, he is meant for Gaston. He is Gaston. He is that likable asshole who we remember from Beauty and the Beast back in 1991. Definitely, he did a really good job. And as for Josh Gad as LeFou, I think that he brings this this energy into this character. It's unbelievable. And he is definitely the funniest character in this movie. And Josh Gad is really having fun with this character. You can tell he's having fun. And that's what I like. He he is great in this movie. And he is what brings the comedy to this movie. And for the most part, he's what made everyone in this th in my theater laugh. As for that controversy about LeFou being gay, I personally don't really care at all. I don't really mind that. I don't know why people are making such a big deal about it. If LeFou's gay, he's gay. I don't know why it's such a big deal now. I mean, I know it's a Disney movie and all, but I think it's actually good to address all the type of people that there are in the world. And I think that they actually addressed LeFou being gay. Okay. Um, I don't know why people are making such a big deal about it. LeFou's gay. Get over it. That person who owns the the, the drive-in in Alabama. Get over it. LeFou's gay. There's not much else to that. This movie is shot beautifully. It's just... It's beautiful to look at, and there are some really beautiful wide shots and, you know, um, establishing shots. It's just so beautiful to look at with the sets that they're in, which made it a little bit more believable in IMAX. We'll get to that in a second. And I'm really big on CGI and on visual effects, and I know I said that the CGI looks a little bit unfinished on the beast towards the ending, of the movie, but uh, the, on everything else, the visuals, everything else is just fantastic in this movie. It's just a very beautiful film to look at. We have some of the same dialogue and all the same songs that we know from the original in this movie. And we have a few new songs in this movie. And I like how they stayed original still. Of course, they're adapting from the original, but they're also staying they're, they're being a little bit more original of writing their own music into this movie, and I really appreciate that a lot. I did see this movie in regular IMAX, not IMAX 3D, because my IMAX theater didn't have this in IMAX 3D till like later at night, till like 11 p.m., but uh, the IMAX experience was still immersive. The uh, picture quality, will actually, uh, the picture, they opened the frame a little bit more from the standard release, to the IMAX release, they opened the frame more so you could see more of what is there. And if you see this movie in regular, you won't see everything. But if you see it in IMAX, you're going to see more. Um, go on, on the IMAX Twitter page and you'll see what I'm talking about. Because they're really promoting the hell out of this movie in IMAX. And the sound is, the sound is phenomenal in IMAX. The musical numbers like Be Our Guest and uh, Gaston, when they are performing those songs, you actually feel like you're with these characters listening to the song and it just immerses you into this movie and that ballroom dance. It feels like the Beast and Belle are dancing right in front of you. It's such a immersive experience. I'm going to say that the IMAX is worth it. This movie really does look beautiful on that big IMAX screen and as for the movie itself it was really hard trying to come up with a grade for this movie but I decided and in my rating system Beauty and the Beast is a full prize worthy but in a letter grade I'm gonna give Beauty and the Beast an A. It was really hard to pick a grade because the movie was either an A- minus or an A but the reason why I gave it an A is because it just added some more scenes and uh, a little bit more of original songs to actually try to be same as the original but yet try to be a little bit more different so I really like how they tried uh, on that level and pay full price to watch this movie you won't regret it you're gonna have a great time at this movie um, if you guys seen Beauty and the Beast please let me know what you guys thought about it down below anyways thank you very much for watching please like this video and subscribe and yeah, definitely watch Beauty and the Beast. Such a good movie. Uh, other than that, I'll see you guys later. Bye. For my next movie day, Power Rangers. Now, I'll see you guys later. Bye.